Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to talk about Magic Gathering, and I'm going to tell you right now, the future of Dungeons and Dragons, in my humble opinion, is Magic the Gathering. All right, so on the cover of this video, you see a very unique, very important product. That is a notebook that I received when I was specifically uh, at a at the Adventures uh, in Forgotten Realms, Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering pre-release. I bought six hundred dollars worth of those cards, and the reason why is, come on, man, like you know. But I've been playing the I've I've been playing Magic the Gathering in since 1993. I started in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And we would we would drive back to Philly and buy every pack we could get our hands on, because we the moment we saw it we knew it was going to be huge, and you have no idea how huge it was. Magic: The Gathering changed uh, tabletop role playing games forever, and was the biggest comet to hit tabletop. Ta was the biggest thing in tabletop gaming ever since Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons blew up too. People saw it and they were like. Holy cows, this is incredible, right? And they really just went ham on it, right? And it was the same with Magic the Gathering. So Magic the Gathering came out in 1993 and uh, hugely important to, you know, in the, in the history of, of America and really the history of the, and if it's important, America is generally important in the world. That's just the way the world works now. Um, and it really ain't the flip. We don't see, like... Maybe a few things from international stuff comes over here, but generally we export our culture. We don't import culture in America. Uh, and so, so basically, that it that says MTG X D and D. That mean that thing was made by Wizards of the Coast, and in my humble opinion, it was a, it was a clarion call to the sky. Magic and Dungeons and Dragons are one product, one, right? And the reality is. Their history has been intertwined to de together since 1995, okay? In 1993, Magic the Gather came out. I'm telling you, I was I was in a car driving back, driving from Lancaster to Philadelphia because we knew Magic the Gathering was going to be huge, right? And the way the first time I saw it was there was this thing called anti, you would actually you would anti cards and people were signing moxes, and there was one dude who was like, I'm not signing my mox over to you, you know, with a pen. And people were like, why not? It's 50, the card's 15 cents. And he goes, this card ain't 15 cents. This game is going to be big, right? And he was he was exactly right. And when I saw it, I was like, whoa. He was like, this, card, this piece of cardboard ain't 15 cents worth of value. He knew then. You know, you know, what, a, you know what a mox was worth now? 40 grand. $40,000, right? I myself, back in, like, so I sold my, I collected hard from 1993 uh, to 1997. I bought a car and I bought my wife diamond earrings off of what I made in four years, right? I still have cards to this day. I have thousands of cards. Most of my rares have been sold off. I just have a lot of commons and uncommons. But weirdly, commons and uncommons from older sets can really bump, right? Like, it's it's wild. But I have thousands of cards because I've been playing Magic. Every day Magic could be played on this planet, right? And I never stop, and I still play, right? Like, And so the reality is, and here's the kicker, right? Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons, uh, past, present, and future are bonded Bonded. They were bonded in 1990s, it, and so in 1995, really, because Peter Atkinson, we know this because of Ben Riggs' new book, right? Peter Atkinson sought out, desperately sought to purchase Dungeons and Dragons, um, in, you know, from 1995 on. And when he did his due diligence, he was like, "Oh, uh, the, you know, Dungeons and Dragons is 30 million dollars in debt. No problem. I'll take it. I'll buy all of the debt. I'll take it." Right, because he knew Dungeons and Dragons was way bigger, way more important, way better than anything he already owned, and he owned Magic the Gathering, right? Like you know, so so the reality is D and D and Magic the Gathering are now one product, in my humble opinion. You see it right there on the cover, MTG times D and D. They multiply each other, right? And get this, what ties them together? 
the multiverse. It is talked about constant. It was talked about the the word multiverse. If if you if you drank every time they said multiverse in uh, in that um, if you took a drink every time they said multiverse, you would die from alcohol poison. Right in the in the uh, in the you know the presents uh, section. So it's very important. Um, you need to understand, like, it is really important to understand that the multiverse uh, is the multiverse of Dungeons and Dragons and the multiverse of magic are connected, are connected, right? This is really critical, all right? Uh, and so, so the multiverse is connected and that's huge. The, the ramifications of that is absolutely massive. Um, and so what does that mean? That means, well, like, and, and t for the lower realm, for the lower edges of this, it's non-debatable. Come on, like, there's an Adventures in Forgotten Realms Magic the Gathering set, which is real. It was a pre-release. It established canon in Forgotten Realms. None of that is debatable, right? And then um, on the other side, Magic the Gathering has Ravnica and it has Theros. Those are two official, um, uh, official worlds from uh, Magic the Gathering worlds that are fully statted, core canon books in, Dun in in Dungeons and Dragons. So the multiverses are connected, right? And then there might be some debate on this. I think you'd have to like there's and the only. The reason why there's a lot of bait on things, people just stop thinking. But if you're a thinking human being and you think logically and you look at the facts in front of you, the the multiverse is massively expanding. So Dungeons and Dragons is connected to Dominaria through Ravnica and through Theros, right? Dominaria is connected to the Doctor Who world, is connected to Warhammer 40k through Magic the Gathering. Those universes are together, right? Those multiverses are there. That's established, right? And the reality is there are thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces of art on Magic the Gathering that are completely unequaled anywhere in Dungeons and & Dragons. And that fantasy art is needed on the Dungeons & Dragons side. And get this, the absolute junk lore writing that's done on the Magic the Gathering side, they need real lore, right? Forgotten Realms lore and Planescape, and Dragonlance, and, um, you know, and Dark Sun, and, um, Abernus, you know, the Birthright World, um, you know, they need lore. D&D &D needs the art of magic, and magic needs the lore of Dungeons and Dragons. One company owns them, and if you watched Wizards of Present, they're like, oh, are you a Dungeons and Dragons fan? Would you like your own uh, little show where you can hear just the Dungeon Dragon news? You can go kick rocks because you're going to listen to this Magic the Gathering news because guess what? This peanut butter and this chocolate are mixed. This is one product, right? It is one product. I think if you're paying attention, you will see this. And if you get on this, you can be one of the top Dungeon Masters there are because this is the future of Dungeons & Dragons, right? This is, this is the cool aspects of it. If And... You can do a lot by mixing these two. Um, and so, you know, it. and and they were like, oh, are you a Magic the Gathering, but you don't want to hear about Dungeons and Dragons? You can go kick rocks. This is one product, right? Like, they, was, they were just, they said it. They did not say the literal words. They just did it in 55 different ways. There's like, y'all's all going to listen to this because you're one community, right? Now, which one's more important? You and I know D&D, man. Like, you know, like... D&D was around way before Magic, right? And Peter Atkinson was a brilliant dude, and he mixed, he put that chocolate and that peanut butter together, and it's still getting put together to this day. All that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.